This is Devin. Welcome to another episode of Writing Daily. Today we're going to talk about ridiculousness and details and passion. And welcome, just for those who don't know, my name is Devin Galladay. And every day I do this show that is about writing for writers, whether or not you are sort of like a serious professional or whether you're just having fun and want to get better at your writing. So before I get into that, I kind of want to tell you uh, uh, some little stories that are going to lead to where today's uh, event is. And by the way, welcome Bruce and Anne and Elizabeth. Thanks so much for being here. Uh, so again, every day we talk about writing. And today I want to talk about perhaps one of the very first books that really sort of turned me on. 100 Greatest Baseball Heroes. And truthfully, it's uh, it's largely a collection of stories from the guys of the 1930s, pretty much exclusively white guys wearing like burlap pajamas as baseball uniforms. That all said, I had loved diving into all the incredible details, which is baseball. Baseball is just like a series of incredible statistics that we get to mull around and flip around. And it was those statistics that wanted me to read the stories. It was those kinds of some, so almost sort of like absurd details that was something that always excited me. And by the way, if you are liking what we're doing, please consider hitting the like button or write a question or reach out. I get to everything all the time and we're on iTunes and a million other places now, which is kind of fun. So, um, Oh, yes, Bruce, I enjoy listening to you. Carry on and enjoy the spirit that feeds your heart. And this is one of them. Tina, welcome. Yes, this is a, a, a thing that feeds my heart. So so the baseball thing led into, like the, the love of baseball led me into a love of books because the stories of baseball literally started translating into other forms of literature. I think the first author I really loved was Agatha Christie. I will save that for another day. But what is sort of like baseball statistics have to do with what I'm about to talk about. Well, I'm going to tell you another story. And that and then I'm going to read you. Then I'm going to read you a story. So the 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 story was geez about I want to say about 15 17 years ago I took an improv class. That's the hardest thing in the world. Somebody gives you like a statement and then you run with the statement and you do one of a million things. But one of they said, one of the secrets was, is that anytime you are talking about anything, you name it and you give it a very specific name. You give it the R27, you know, the flux capacitor is the name that just jumped in my mind. So you give it to some sort of realistic thing and then you can talk about the details of this obscure bizarre thing in all kinds of ways. And I think it does two things. I'm going to talk about those two things in just a moment. But the thing that I wanted to talk about, or the thing that I want to read to you, actually comes from a writer named George Saunders. Uh, if you are a book lover, you've probably heard of this guy because he's just beyond ridiculous and a wonderful writer and everybody who reads him loves him. I love him. I think I own everything that he has written uh, or or at least I have read most of it. So I'm not going to go into the full details of the story, but there, this is a response letter from a product that helps babies seem much older than they are supposed to be. And so the story, so I'm kind of jumping in in the middle of a paragraph, but hopefully you'll you'll get the idea. No one can read a baby's mind, at least not yet, although we're probably working hard on it. What I can say is that the I can speak trademark can do. However, is uh, what it can do, however, is recognize familiar oral patterns and respond to these patterns in a way that makes a baby seem older. Say baby sees a peach. If you and Mr. Faniglia, George Saunders was always great with names as well. Uh, Mr. Faniglia, I hope I do not presume, were to loudly say something like, what a delicious peach. The I can speak trademark upon hearing this through that hole, that little slotted hole near the neck might respond by saying something like, I want peach or I like peach. Or if you had chosen the ICS-2000, which you did not, 
you chose the ICS-1900, which is fine, perfectly good for most babies. The I can speak trademark might even respond by saying something like fruit. Isn't that one of the four major food groups? So anyway, this is kind of like beyond ridiculousness and it's hilarious. And that's kind of the, the detail is sort of like, and I think this lends itself perfectly for writing fiction, because especially if you're doing something that is kind of way out there, uh, you know, like a futures, futuristic thing. You can take any kind of product or machine and go into great details of what it does or what it does or doesn't do, and you give it a name because it would be much better to come up with the I can speak 2100 versus uh, this cool gadget. Like give it a name, give it a, give it power. The more you the more you name it, the more you can give it power and give it strength. This is also important, I think. So on the on the air of the ridiculousness, um, when you give something a name, when you give it a detail, you can go any direction you want with it, especially if you've invented it, like they, like George Saunders has in this case. But if you're writing something that is more, shall we say, a non-fiction-y kind of thing, you can still dive into great detail. Another quick story. I was sitting in a car with a couple buddies of mine today. Uh, we went and had lunch, and both of these guys are car guys. Like, these are you know, if you bring up cars from, let's say, like 1950 to like 1975, they are all over it. They know every single detail. Like I was corrected. I brought up something about the a 1971 Cougar, which my mother owned, and said something to the effect of it looking like a, a Ford Mustang. And they're like, no, 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 no. Those were like the 64 to 67 variety, which were the coupe and the two-door and the swing something, blah, 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 blah. And what that tells me, and this was probably, I guess, one of the, the bigger deals is that it creates a measure of passion in your character when they can go into great detail about the things that they are talking about. I don't know if we want to make a life of it, but I think if you if you go into some sort of a product or some kind of a thing that a character is interested in, then I think what you have is sort of like a slam dunk in diving into what that character really does by going into the details of that thing and use it by name, use it by date, use it by code brand or serial number or whatever it might be. So in other words, if you're going to talk about guns, you can talk about a, you know, a, a Magnum, a Magnum 38, right? Or you can talk about you know, one of a hundred other things, but whatever it is, go into that kind of detail. And again, it lends itself more towards uh, you know, like a passionate side for somebody who's a collector, or you can easily, easily, easily turn it into absurdity in much the way uh, George Saunders did. And by the way, the book that I am referring to is called In Persuasion Nation. He is a fantastic writer. If you haven't read him before, I highly recommend that you do. And by the way, thank you. Uh, welcome, Michael and Karen and Kevin. Great to have you here. So if you are writing, use some obscure details, use something really specific to help kind of build passion inside of your character. And, and of course, also recognize that some of these details can be slightly skewed to become absurd uh, you know, products that speak on behalf of infants. So anyway, that's what I've got for today. As always, please consider hitting the like button. Um, and as always, I'm going to be back here again tomorrow talking about details of writing, how do we become better writers, how we throw it out there. And, you know, like and follow me. Find me on iTunes at Writing Daily with Devin. Anyway, that's what I've got for today. Uh, thank you so much, and I look forward to seeing you guys again real soon.